happen. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about, and this might seem really, really stupid, but I'm, I'm going to try it out. Uh, okay. I, I want you guys to tell me, because the big thing that I've noticed is, like, the other team ran weird comps, you guys run weird comps, and I want you guys to identify why your comp is good, why your comp is bad. So I want to just show you my screen. Uh, we're going to make, like, not a tier list, but just, like, section off heroes in the game. And you guys tell me... Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How do I, how do I, uh, okay, okay. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no cheats here. Cause I, you know, I figured it, I was doing it all myself. To me, there's like three basic types of, of comps in this game. Uh, mm -hmm. there's rush, there's dive, there's poke. Obviously it's never just one or the other. Sometimes you're two and one. Uh, let me yes. give an example, like, uh, Lucio Moira, monkey, uh, Sombra Reaper. That's probably both like rushy and divey at the same time. Uh, I want you guys to talk to me about, like, you know, individually what heroes go where. Uh, and yeah. we can place, like, we can place literally every single hero in the game. And if there's two two spots, that's fine by me. Before uh, we start, yeah. yeah, what's up? I would like to say that tier list does not include all the characters. Probably doesn't, but le let's let's use it for now. Cause I, okay, I okay, okay, my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm almost certain it doesn't. Uh, I wouldn't know, but... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm getting um, rid of Bastion here as well, because what the fuck. Uh, don't play this hero. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, but yes. I, I'm going to leave this more to the players, and I would like yeah. every player to participate in this. I'm going to refrain from this. Yeah, sounds good. Got it. Okay, so let's start with uh, Ash. Let's start with Ash. Where do we think she's more at? Hard poke. Oh, Absolutely poke. poke. Yeah. Okay, cool. Doomfist, where are we thinking? Could dive. be rush dive. Rush and dive. Rush and dive. Both. Okay. I'm down for both. Uh I'm just too lazy. I think there's another Doom icon. We'll we'll put them in both. Okay. Um where is Diva? Uh, I think rush, she's rush, rush dive. One. Rush yeah. dive. Yeah, I, think I feel like poke dive probably dive not as much. Because Diva has to get in there to poke anything. Right. It's, she, it's it's rush dive. She has very little damage, right? Like long range, she she her she has yeah. shotguns, yeah. Okay. I cannot find the second copy of Diva. As it's long at as the we very talk bottom about row. It. Bottom row. Boom. Okay. Okay. Genji. Dive. Dive. Yeah. Dive. I don't think anywhere else. Okay. Hanzo? Poke. Poke. Okay. Junkrat? I'd say poke as well. More pokish than. Yeah, I, I, I think just poke just makes yeah, more sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he could be running poke yeah, and think, rush though. If we played yeah, him in I rush, think you can do him in rush. Can play him in rush, but it's like not specific. Yeah, he's definitely more pokey than run in your face kind of hero. Sometimes he can I, sometimes. jump into you and stuff like that. But yeah. I, I would, I would mostly yeah. qualify him as poke. Okay. Whew. Where, where does this guy go? Rush. rush. I would. Say. Rush. Okay. Cree. Rush, yeah. Pre, I mean, rush poke is, I would say, uh, yeah, it's a rush poke. Rush say poke. more rush, more rush. Let's. Uh, I don't want to make two copies of everyone. Fuck, it's yeah. it's too annoying. May. Rush, rush, rush yeah. Okay. Mercy. Mercy's poke. poke. Gotta keep him with the ash. Poke and dive. I guess. Poke, maybe dive sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aura. Dive, I'd say. More dive. Dive? She also has long range poke. too. Yeah. yeah. Poke. Yeah. Little bit of poke. Dive and poke. Yeah, really the the thing you do on Farah is you poke, you poke, you poke, and then you, like, find an angle, and then you dive a lot of times. So she's she's both. I'm going to put her in dive. Uh, Arissa? Poke. 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 Arguably, uh, she's in rush. Like, really arguably. If you guys ever played, like, a long time ago, it was, like, Arisia uh, Lucio Moira with double shield, and you guys just ran through, ran past them, and she was better than Ryan because mm -hmm. her fortify was broken. But, yeah, I agree. More poke. Reaper? Rush. Rush. Okay. Rush? Rush. Okay. Hog. This one's interesting. I suppose that one's, I'd say, pokey or rush, depending on... I, that's, I feel like that's so meta-specific. Yeah. I could see it go either way, too. Okay. Like, I really could see him being poke if you're, like, trying to really capitalize off Arisa pools and comboing that, but otherwise, yeah. I guess poke. Yeah, I think poke, I also will make a use, useless category, and I think we can go <laughs> here. He, <laughs> he's a fat, uh, he's a fat DPS, basically. He's a fat DPS that just, like, walks around and does his own thing. Uh, yep. So, I'd put him in poke, but, you know, he, he's really just a odd hero, but... I'd put him in the useless hero. 
this guy's poke, but he's useless as well. I see you guys play a lot of hog, a lot of soldier. I'll let you guys know right now. They're useless, but they're they're ranked heroes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through many more. I think I think you guys are getting the idea. Okay. So now what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to talk about these comps. Let's start with Rialto first. Um Welcome to Rialto. Ready for battle. You guys start on this comp. Sorry. You guys start on this comp. What What is your comp's main goal and what is their comp's main goal? Our comp's uh, played a uh, distance. They want to run into us. Yeah. Okay. What else do you want besides distance? Because I see you guys. You guys are playing distance. Point. We we want to we want to keep distance, but we also want to play the objective. So we do need to take some. Like we need to have some amount of control on the on the actual cart. Okay. To me, what you guys need is angles. If they're more grouped up, if they're rush, every time. Oh, let me bring out a pen. Sorry. Anytime someone wants to rush you, this is what happens in League of Legends. This is kind of just like any any really any movement, any war thing. Uh. These guys run into you this way. The general thing is, if they run into you, they you they can get flanked from behind, right? This happens in Valorant and anything. They rush A on Valorant, you can swing behind them on B, right? This is why you have yeah. Sentinels on in Valorant where you like leave a trap behind and then you know you have info on that, right? In in war you do this, but <laughs> you get shit on this way. Right now, what you guys do, and the reason that I I say you guys are more of a Lucio team, uh, and like I don't. I don't see like really anyone on your team seeming to understand this concept, which is why I don't want you guys to play uh, poke comps, is because you guys don't actually know how to poke from many angles. You guys have to take wider angles because every single time their their team, if you just look at the differences of their comp, let's say the hitscans are basically the same. I, I think more or less basically the same. Really, it's the tanks that are different and then these guys that are different. The thing that we should be noticing is we have Mercy, they have Lucio. My Mercy can go pocket a DPS on any of the sides, and they can go high ground. These guys can't go high ground super easily. Like, we should be using, like, different angles, my Mercy pocket, to get a wider angle. Because their Lucio with the team, like, makes the rush. But if I have a Mercy just standing behind my team, standing behind these guys, I'm pretty sure it's basically equal or their advantage that they get to just walk at our Arissa for free. And my, all my Mercy is doing is a 33 damage boost. Instead of 33 damage boost, I could just be playing Zen and just shooting and being another character. Like, it, if you're only mer using Mercy for damage boost, it's it's problematic. Which I, I kind of see, like, we just attach. Like, it's like the rank thing of, like, oh, I, I, I'll just stick hard on my DPS. It's fine to do that if they're taking space, but then our DPS don't take space. So, th the first problem is, you guys don't take any angles. Uh, so, no angle here. Their comp, just for reference, is bad as well. You guys play this comp as well. This comp is bad because of the main reason you're half poke, half rush. It's fine to be like half rush, half uh, half dive. That that's like more acceptable because either way you just like collapse in on them. But half of the, like the antithetical things don't make sense, right? Like you're half and half on opposite directions, and that's what these guys are. That's what you guys do later as well, which is both are bad. But yeah, we'll go over that bit later. Sorry, my bad. I jumped ahead of myself. Okay, here. You guys are doing the play distance thing, but if you guys just always play distance, they walk forward, you walk back. It's not very interesting. They just use a corner. Okay, you guys walk backwards. That's fine. You guys should see that you actually have the better spam comp, right? The better uh, poke comp. They have a worse poke comp uh, and a worse rush comp. You guys use window to take space. Probably not needed here. Okay, how do you guys take this corner is my question. I'm going to freeze this before you guys actually make your mistake. But how, how do you guys want to take this corner? They have a rush comp and you guys are in a tiny choke. How do you guys take this corner? I think what we did do was all of us walk to a corner. But we probably should have done is taking, like, I on Ash should have taken high ground here to poke from above. Maybe our Creed takes an angle through the doorway behind Uh inside of the building yeah right yeah. there yeah you pretty much like in this game playing linear like when i say linearly it's like you think of this map as like 2d this map is 3d as hell here is an angle here is an angle 
here is kind of a shitty angle, uh, to be honest, because you were talking about this. This is not that good of an angle for when they're up here, but maybe my Kree can flash from up here or something like that. Kree from this short distance is really good. He flashes through. Every time I saw these two teams, I'm uh, for reference, you guys said you were about 3.5 average. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like mm -hmm. within 30. Yes. I, I would say though. it's higher towards the tank side um, and okay. medium on the DPS and then lower on support. To me, this is, I, I kind of have a high expectation, maybe. Uh, I could be wrong, but, you know, I was, like, a 4,500 DPS player, like, when I did play. And, like, this was, like, basic hit scan stuff that I, I need to see something to do something. And I'm not, I'm not, shoot, I don't want to shoot shields. I want to shoot the back line. I want to, I want to shoot around the shields. I never want to actually shoot Ryan. If I'm shooting Ryan, it's because nothing else is available. But, like, look, if, if my back line goes through this way, what, what will they do? They'll just run at you, right? You, you give them the choke. And then you're also... Yeah, you're so tight next to them. You're so tight next to them. There's so many reasons why this is bad, but we'll see what happens. Even they took an angle on the dive, right? Or they're, they're rushing, sorry, an angle on the rush. And they should have been running through this. The Rhine's trying to use the fire strike. You really shouldn't. Realistically, they should run through and then the back line can use it. But he should have just killed three right here, in my opinion. And then probably shattered you. This movement was too slow from them. Uh, but, yeah. You guys can't really do anything. I can look at your guys' POVs, but, like, I I'm sitting here. I cannot see anything. I'm sitting here. Yeah. I cannot see anything. I'm sitting here. I'm dead. <laughs> Th this is yeah. not how you want to play a, a hit scan. This is not how you guys want to play your comp. So, if you guys were the... The reason I tell you this is because it will help on both sides. If you're Rush, the opposite is true. I want to restrict their sight lines, and I know that they're going to take angles on me here, 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 maybe even here. They can take angles any any single place. What I need to do, maybe I have a Hi Heidi player. Heidi player is good. I like this creep position from him. And then I need to one motion this and push all the way through. Ryan doesn't need to use wind though. It's a bait. Just run through. Your hammer does 85 damage times three people. You already do more than your, your window fire strike. Run through. You, you're a melee hero. Go run through. Kill these guys. Your team can use the window. Whatever. So... Their win condition is the same, like, their win condition, your win condition are going to be exact opposites, and you guys just need to play that game. So that's why I went over mm -hmm. the tier list before. You guys pick heroes in the category, you guys identify what you guys have over them, and then they have more rush. Okay, cool. I don't want to get rushed one, but I, I hate when plans aren't aggressive. Uh, like, don't get rushed is, a, is an okay plan, but I want something proactive. The proactive thing is take angles, take angles, take angles. And if you were playing a rush comp and then they were a poke comp, what I need to do is take space creatively. Like, you know, route around here if I need to. Find a way to rush them and set up and then look for a rush, you know? Yes, I yeah. need to not get surrounded is the is one thing, but the proactive thing is I need to look for a rush. Okay? Got yeah. it. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is like... Um, Ready for battle. So you guys have a successful attack. Um, relatively, it was like kind of sketchy uh, at all points, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, just going to go over more basic stuff again, uh, again about comp. Your guys' comp, What what is it? It's this half poke, half rush variation. What yeah. is their comp? Full rush, basically. It's like the best version of rush. This is yeah. what they ran in playoffs. You know, Symmetra is insane. For those who don't know, like Symmetra is like probably like the best DPS uh, in Rush versus Rush because she kills everything in Rhine Comp. She has TP and her wall is insane. So, yeah, and she just has like probably one of the highest damage per second. Consistent damage. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna throw on my behalf. Oh no worries. So what is your guys' win condition with even though you guys don't have like the best comp like? I don't really care what comp you play. All I, I care more about how you play. If you guys want the best comps, all you guys need to do is follow any Overwatch League match and just like that isn't on hero pools and then like play that comp. Like honestly, like there's basic comps that uh like have existed in Overwatch for like past four years. I'm sure you guys know them if you guys look at any VODs. There's like there's Ball Zen, Sombra Tracer, Zen Brig, you know, there's that comp. Mm -hmm. There's Winston, Diva, Moira, Lucio, Reaper, Sombra. That's another one. There's this classic brawl. Maybe Kree instead sometimes. Maybe Tracer instead sometimes. All this different type of stuff you guys could easily find. So I don't really care about that. I care more how you guys play. So what is your, what is what are you guys trying to do right now? 
Like, what is your goal right now, and what do you need to be careful of for them? May wall, uh, be a really big one. Or Ryan getting walled off before we can, uh, help him. I remember Let's on say... this map, I got TP'd on. Mm -hmm. I think that was, like, a big mistake on my end, but they just yeah. TP'd, and I got, you know... Yeah, they TP'd on. right behind us here, yeah. I'm pretty sure, and then... I, I, didn't, I didn't think of that, but... We weren't ready, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. This is... Okay, so, one one thing, <laughs> maybe just for you guys, this is, like, actually one of the main reasons you play Symmetra is because your rotations are good, and you can pretty much kill anything. You can also just run into them, and I think they would win as well, but they can cut off your off angles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what else do we need to do to win? What else do we need to do to win? We need to be aware of TP, one. Um... Just so wait, keep was... them from uh, taking space for free, really. Just be yeah. in their face and keeping that cart from moving. Where do you guys want to fight cart? And why? That chokes and corners so that we can back into cover. Mm. Okay, this is again, maybe again, problem with your comp. You guys, you want to use a corner. Uh, I assume that was the main tank talking or I, I don't actually know. Uh, uh, Diego it's the, the off tank. Off tank. Off tank. Is, okay. Uh, the diva. Yeah, using corners is great for you guys in general because you're Ryan and you want to you want to be around a corner so that you can rush a choke, right? Um, the problem is these guys actually want open space a lot of the times. Think about hitscan heroes. They like maps like Junker Town, like Havana. These wide open maps. It's it's so fun playing these wide open maps with hitscan. But again, antithetically, your your Ryan wants to chill behind a wall uh, and then like push them. So again, a little bit of comp problem, but. Really, I think what you guys have to do is play out in the open. Uh, and to me, like, even fighting here is better. Like, making a plan here, being aware of TPs here where your D.Va can boop them if they come. Your Hanzo over here, like, they have no range damage other than BAP and May right click. Uh, and, like, I guess Lucio spam. Like, you guys should be fighting, like, choosing your fight location based on your win condition. Hey, we have more poke than them. We actually need to play, like, in open space. We need to give a little bit of room. Again, if they're a good team, honestly, like Symmetra should be able to dominate you because they can cut distance and like figure things out. Uh, but that is your guys' win condition is to surround them still. I know you guys aren't much of a poke comp. You guys are like one or two heroes off of a poke comp. But that's that's the main thing you have to do here. You can't shoot the Rhine shield. They have better shield break with Symmetra. Uh, and they'll they'll have better wall, like protection for their Rhine. They'll just wall off the Rhine and wall off your hit scans if you guys run a straight linear fight they should win every time i have no doubt but here all same angle literally everyone is the same exact fucking angle uh you guys don't own any more space than them they can tp anywhere they could have just tp'd on your bap as far as i'm concerned uh and it would be fine but yeah like So one, I would suggest changing your comp. I know you guys have two hit scan players, but uh, I, I I think it's very strange. Basically, is my opinion. Uh, double hit scan is almost never good. Uh, just mm -hmm. like as a general rule of thumb, double hit scan is never good because you guys have two people doing the same exact thing. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So is the comp difference thing making sense to you guys? Like whatever their win yeah. condition is, it's our lose condition. So we have to with every disadvantage, there's an advantage that we have and. Sometimes it's not good, and you guys need to think about what comp you're playing. But uh, for the most part, I want you guys to just be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can go more over this map. Oh, the reason that May is good as well, like for she's basically a poke hero. Like she has r really great poke, and then her wall utility is great, not just for Ryan, but for BAP windows uh, as well. Yeah. Like she can block off BAP windows. So yeah, you really, really want a May if you're running Ryan. A lot of the times, if you're running uh, Lucio. Ryan, you guys can find ways to kill things. Okay. So would you say for, like, when we're playing this rush comp, like, trying to play that Sim May would be, like, loads better for what we're trying to do than Sim May McCree. or Cree May. Uh, I will say Sim is, like, it requires a lot of teamwork and a lot of, like, yeah intelligence on how to move around the map. Uh, yeah. Sim should be best. If you're in the Ryan vs. Ryan mirror, Sim should be the best, but uh, mm -hmm. it I think Kree is probably is possibly fine. If if a team is really good, like on rush, they should be running. Like at the highest level, it's always going to be sim. But yeah, yeah. Okay. So this next thing, we need to be ready for their window turns. Like, uh, they're going to window in open space still, even though they're this calm. The cart's really far back. They just like fuck up in my opinion, but it's fine. They waste a window, no problem. Next is our window turn. So like, 
Um, again, this is like a Maywall to counter it. But as Ryan, what you want to do is like play chokes, right? So you guys might want to let this cart move further along so that you guys can play this longer bridge sight line. In this case, since it's one fight anyways, like I need to fight like way out here, out in the open, which might be hard because there's going to be like sim turrets set up and everything. Or I need to like fight back here so that my, my hits can have more range and my BAP can sit on bridge and shoot everything. And how you take angles is like maybe my Kree like rolls in through here. But since you guys do this, I'm fine with this. But you guys need to one motion this push with angles, with angles. My Kree is going to roll through here like with my D.Va and like, or maybe not with my D.Va, maybe he's helping the Rhine, but you guys need to rush them and like have a flank set up, have another angle set up. Again, if we're all just shooting from this side, D.Va just presses DM for two seconds and then the Sim is just beaming your Rhine down for like 200 damage a second. Yeah, I find that, um, I, I mentioned this before to the team, I think that we play just way too linear a lot of the time um, in not poke. I know that in more recent, like the last uh, set of games we did, our other player, uh, Zavilio, he was poking a lot more off to the side with like Soldier, um, and it was very good because it it was pressuring the characters from another distance. But I definitely think in a situation like this, um, we have trouble sometimes with windows, and that's something we've been working on too. Mm -hmm. I think that overall, definitely just putting the window back more and not having the tanks worry about it because sometimes I know that we like to sit behind window with like our Reinhardt and just pushing ahead of that with both tanks. Uh, would be very beneficial for us and having like just like the baptiste and the hanzo maybe like poking through as the mccree flanks to the right would be a lot better for the team i think like pretty much no one has to use the window but the bap uh the hits can can but if you need to go wider to shoot just shoot uh mm -hmm. and yeah pretty much the window is usually a solo ultimate it's like up to the player like i don't i don't think it's a team ultimate unless it's, you're in orissa versus orissa then you like time it but pretty much your bap is the only one who has to use it no one else has to use it uh yeah yeah, because I think we, we fall into this thing of uh, the window's out, everyone has to use it, when, as you said, realistically, only the, the BAP is the only one that should be always using the window, unless you're, like, setting up for something or doing something. Yep. You can, you can, I'm not saying don't use the window, but just, like, you don't need to force using the window. Yes. Um, okay. So again here, like, technically their comp is way better, they fuck up. All, all, all the, a lot of this map was like individual mechanics on the Rhines. <laughs> it was very strange. Uh, like you guys basically won and lost fights based off Rhine shatters, so it's yeah. very strange. Uh, but that's not really team play, and like I can't really control how good your Rhine is. I can't really control how good their Rhine is. Uh, okay, so what is what is our main thing that we need to do? We need to start poking aggressively. They're gonna have like a creative sim TP, I think, to get under you guys. Oh, yeah, they, they tried to do that. I think uh, they should TP over here, but this is kind yeah. Of scary. We we had popped high noon early, uh, thinking that they would TP like instantly, um, but the high noon kept them back for a while, which gave the team more time yeah. to think. But we do think we should have just used it a bit later. Yeah. Also, their diva screws up their nuke and literally dies for it, and it's just an easy team fight. Yeah. So basically, if they land below you, just like any other rush comp, again, if we're more a natural rush comp, you guys can just the main thing that you want to kill in rush versus rush and dive versus dive in any comp. Is their backline. I don't care if you're playing poke versus poke, any comp. If you can hit their backline, go for their backline. Uh, so this Ryan just they they drop below you. Imagine they're just below you as Ryan comp. You guys always drop on this. Uh, again, if you have better like rushers, it's easier. But yeah, rush go their backline. Fantastic. Don't swing on this guy. Swing on this guy. Okay, cool. This was the dragon push. I think they TP this side instead. Yeah. Oh, they just walk. Oh, okay, whatever. If you guys are pushing something, push together. I don't, like, there's no reason to throw out a solo dragon. If someone dies to a solo dragon on their team, they're, they're just actually, like, quite bad, right? Like, if you die 1v6 to PvE dragon, like, there's no way. Like, you're, you're a human being. Like, uh, you should not die to a dragon. Look how the, this dragon is 1v6. I count dragon as, like, part of your team, and you guys are letting this dragon 1v6. You guys should, they use TP over here. You guys can aggressively come from here. Yes, they may wall off one side, come from the other side, set up a dive. Like, it sounds weird, set up a rush, set up a dive. I'll call it set up a dive so that you guys start thinking about backline, but set up a dive with your dragon. I, I want to dive with my dragon. After they TP here, I want to dive with my dragon once they're here. Once they TP under here, I want it to be close up to him close up to them here i should have been pressuring this rhine shield so he's like 200 shield and then i should have the shatter advantage as well from here and then i can drop flank shatter them 
or come through this door and shatter from here too. And my team can split from this side and this side because we're setting up a, a dive where you can basically pincer them. But what you guys do here is like the worst possible thing, which is just like let a dragon solo. So, and it solo killed something. It got huge value. But like the dragon is good just to be clear. But you guys aren't trying to fight with your dragon. Imagine if you diva bomb and you just pray that it kills six people. Like that's, that's, that's a terrible way to start the fight. You rush with a diva bomb. You do something. You boop. Uh, so that they they can't get into sight lines, right? Like, or they can't get it into cover. But here, you guys get great cool, great cooldowns out of this. You get a kill, which I don't think should ever happen. Uh, but now you guys are diving, and you guys dive linearly. You guys like see their face, and you just run at them. Uh, yeah, I again, think just a... run from this side, pincer them, pincer them from the back. You guys are trying to kill their backline. I only I like if you guys can kill their backline as a Cree. Cree roll flashbang. Uh, boom! This guy's dead. These guys are all fighting linearly too, because they're also like. 3,400 players, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, but they all are looking, like, linearly. Boom. You just kill them from the back. Set up a dive, and... Yeah. Go. Yes. Uh, I definitely agree with, like, the multi-pincer kind of thing. It's something that we always talk about and always gets brought up, but just, like, never ends up happening. Um, also, that dragons. A problem that we have with some with some of the players is that they don't call out when they're using ults. Um, I know Zavilio. Uh, he has a problem with that sometimes of like, he doesn't tell. In that situation, if he's like, I'm dragoning them, then we can push with that. But I feel like a lot of the time we don't call when we ult. Okay. I think uh, a, a really basic thing for me, uh, for your guys' planning, your guys' planning is bad, but it's uh, I don't think it's from a lack of trying uh, for what it's worth. I think it's just more like uh, you guys might not have good game plans and can think fast enough, which is fine. Like That's just something is that you have to work on. Between every fight, what I want you guys to do is just come up with a plan. Come up with a plan and talk about a location that you want to fight. I don't care, uh, like, what the plan is because, you know, there's optimal plans. I'm not trying to teach you guys optimal plans right now. You Like, we're not ready for optimal plans. Just come up with a plan and a fight location. Fight location will be very clear. I want to dive their back line when they're here. I want to rush them when they TP under us. I want to dragon when they TP. When they TP. I want to beat in when they use bubbles you know something basic i don't think it needs to be like you know the best plan but if you guys pre-plan that between each fight you guys have 20 seconds from spawn after you guys die you guys are staggering whatever you guys have 20 plus seconds to go from base to the next fight a lot of the times in 20 to 30 seconds you guys should be able to come up with a plan together as six it doesn't always need to be one person too if Hanzo has an alt and he has a plan with his alt, he can do it. Maybe Ryan has a plan with his alt, and that's fine too. I don't really care with who comes up with the plan. I would say, like, if it's your alt, come up with a plan with your alt, if possible. That is, like, the easiest and most simple thing to do. But just someone on the team, it's a team game, someone on the team, come up with a plan. And don't do too many plans at once. Have one plan and then add on to the plan. So I don't want plan A, plan B, plan C. I want plan A. And then I want to make plan A really fucking good. Hey, I'm going to diva bomb. Okay, I'm going to get set up for a boop. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna pin the Rhine uh, so that he can't shield. Add on to the plan like this, okay? Don't say, I'm going to bomb, and it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to rush them at this. Like, add on to whatever it is, you know? Rush them at this corner so that we get a better bomb angle. Something like that, okay? Just simple thing, but I think for what it's worth, I think you guys are trying to do it. Uh, it's just... A little hard but if you guys make that a hard rule going into your next scrim i think it'll help a lot and it'll make you guys on the same page more uh which is really really important in rush first rush or sorry any rush comp yeah okay <clears throat> oh i actually oh oh okay that was the that was the main fight i wanted to go over okay Cool. I'm gonna go over some other stuff uh, for the sake of time. Let's go over Numbani. I forgot which Numbani it was. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Okay, so now we're talking about a different version of Rush, but we're actually gonna be talking about similar things, just slightly different contexts. Okay, if you guys wanna, like, I, I don't think Rush is always the best comp. I think, in fact, it's, like, not a very good comp uh, right now, but it's not a big deal. For your guys' level, it's more how you play than anything. Uh, again, we can talk about this comp. I don't know if you guys want to, but we can talk about angles again. But my tracer doesn't do anything from this angle. You should be from over here. We can... I'll, I'll show you guys, but you guys all end up on the same side. So here. Here. And because of this, their tracer goes unchecked. She goes around you. And I can draw the map. Uh, draw the map. But basically, you guys are all on this side of the map. Uh, 
if this map is a circle, it's a giant square, right, in a way, they own here and they own here. So they, they own, like, all of this space. They own roughly, like, 60% of the map. You guys own this side of the map. Uh, you guys can't see things. You guys can't block things. Uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, they, they don't have to care about things on this side. It's pretty bad. So the most, you know, simple thing is that their tracer is flanking. And if we have a tracer on this side, I can actually get an off angle on their tanks and just shoot them from here. But control the wide space. Uh, DPS shouldn't be on the same angle if possible. But again, I, I am like certain you guys lose from here. I don't even think I have to review. I'm going to guess all they have to do is jump your ash because there's no threat on this side. And then they just win a linear fight. You guys are both fighting linearly and then it's not super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we see like someone controlling this side. I can in fact show you guys another VOD where you guys six man. I'll, I'll show the, I'll just explain the angle thing and then go to rush. Sorry. Uh, it's this map. Traveling to ready for battle. Uh, you guys play the OT defense. You guys pretty much all stand over here. Uh, not pretty much. You guys exactly all stand over here. And this makes no sense. Uh, they, yeah. Uh, this makes no sense because the whole reason that you play new, uh, Mercy on new Bonnie, Ash on new Bonnie, Soldier on new Bonnie is because you want to crossfire. Uh, there's no one on this side to crossfire here. You guys, if they go below you, what do you do? If they come from here, what do you do? If they go around you and then back to your hallway, oh, sorry, back to this hallway, and then set up a flank, what do you do? You're just six man stacked on plat. If you're going to do this, play a rush comp, but you guys are playing an angle comp, uh, yeah. And you guys have no angles to do anything. Luckily, you guys just win, but yeah. Uh, this is still really bad for the same reason. Okay, cool. Let's go to the, the rush portion. Oh, and if you see this, another team do this, it just means that you guys can recognize that they fight linearly, and then, like, you guys yeah. can... You guys can just run at them, basically, because right now you guys have the best linear comps, which are which are Rush. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm just going to skip straight ahead. This is the first fight on the comps, so just a stagger fight. Not interesting. Okay. With this comp, uh, what do you what do you guys want to try to kill, and where do you guys want to fight? Uh, I'd say I... primary target would probably be like their Ana, taking out her in the back line because she, usually she'll be alone if they're diving in, supporting from the back line. Ideally, just either of the support would be a good kill. Their Ana is probably more vulnerable than the Mercy, though. I think both are brain dead easy to kill honestly the skybox on this map is pretty dog shit um yeah i i think both of them basically is is the answer and it just depends on the situation where do we want to fight above them realistically we just want to be above them and drop on it's a trick question anywhere <laughs> you guys can dive awesome. anywhere on the entire map there is no reason I could spawn camp with this comp and it's good. I could I could fight anywhere with this comp. That's the beauty of this comp. You can fight anywhere. This is why this comp is so good is because if you, this is a go first comp. Sometimes you don't want to go first, but I don't want to go over that. Right now, you guys just need to learn the basics. Go first. Go first with this comp. Find a fight location. And good news, you can fight anywhere. Lucio Moira might need to get set up on high ground if you guys want to dive high ground. But that's fine, too. Like, you guys can dive literally anywhere. This Sombra can infinitely scout for you guys. They are here. They are here. They are here. Reaper can TP anywhere. These guys can fly anywhere. Lucio can mostly get anywhere. And Moira is quite fast, but, you know, has to stay on the floor. So maybe floor is better, but pretty much anywhere you guys can fight. So we just need to set up a dive. If we can fight anywhere and I want to kill their supports, we need to set up a dive wherever the fuck they're at and pull the trigger. And we need to go first. I want to go first every time with my comp. And dive versus dive going first is OP. If Anna has to nade herself, that means she doesn't have uh, heal for later. If their mercy has to peel, it means that their monkey doesn't have heals, right? Like... You just want to go first, uh, and then you don't have to react as well. It's it's much easier to plan your proactivity than it is to react to everything that the opponent's doing. So here, what are you guys set up for? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing.
and then we waste our jump. And we're not really ready for a dive. Like, this isn't a good quality dive at this point. Uh, across from here... Sorry. Here, people are coming back. Just say you're coming back, and then set up a dive somewhere. It doesn't need to be... Again, we can fight out here, but you guys have respawners. We can fight anywhere. We let their backline go through the tunnel. That's fine, too. And then my Sombra hacks from here, and my Reaper gets an angle from over here, and then drops on them. That's fine. Set up angles for your dive, too, if you can. If you can. You don't always have to, but because these two, this hero is invisible, and then this hero can TP anywhere. But if you can, set up an angle for your dive. For example, if my Reaper was up here, maybe he gets contested by an Echo, comes back. Maybe he doesn't, and then he just falls down, two taps the Mercy, whatever. Two taps the, the tree. But right now, you guys should be, like... Talking about setup, 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 look for backline, and then find a location. Find a location to dive that I want to dive. And my DPS are talking a lot during this time of where they can set up. My any one of my divers who have an ability, like I want to coal here because it's the best line. If we dove anywhere, like really realistically, this whole map is good for coal. But like let's say there are some parts of the map that are better for coal. I want to fight out in the open because my coal is best. I want to fight in this hallway because coal is best here. That's fine. Anyone can call the dive in this comp, and that's the beauty of this comp. But right here. I, I think I remember your guys' comms as well. It's just not talking about anything important. And here, you guys go for a dive, but diving tanks. I don't want to dive tanks. I want to dive past the tanks. If they only show their tanks and their supports are too far away, then yeah, you can dive their tanks because, like, let's say their Ana was playing all the way back here. She's not diveable. Don't dive her. Just, you know, hack and kill the monkey here. No problem. If the monkey, Ana's over here, monkey's over here, that's, that's an acceptable situation to dive tanks. Ana's over here, pretty far away. Uh, but nothing is really too far as long as you have setup. My Sombra is set up over here. My Reaper was hiding over here. Nothing is too far. I, I can tell you Dallas Fuel has proved that nothing is too far. So the quality of this fight is like pretty bad. Uh, yeah, re really bad, I guess. Okay, right now, you guys need to be setting up again. No matter what... <laughs> The, this comp is so great because you only have one win condition and it's just rush the living shit out of them. Dive the living shit out of them. There's really only one condition to this comp. It, it's so brain dead. Like, uh, it, But it's like really, really good. This is why it's a really simple comp. You guys just need to be talking about your setup again. They, in fact, have no healers. So uh, we're talking in the back. Oh, okay. They have no healers. We're talking in the front. Like, push, push, push. This is all fine. But you guys should Basically. be getting ready for your next dive and being sure that you can actually dive them. Basically, our comms at all times are either setting up for dive and what, like, or currently in the action of diving something. Yeah, you're always you're always planning. Okay, in in, in any Overwatch thing, any comp, it really doesn't matter. You're planning your next fight, and then mid fight, you are just calling targets, doing mid fight stuff. Uh, but you're planning your next fight or you're mid fighting. Those are like the only two things you're doing. And with this pace, you know, with this comp, you can pretty much fight whenever. Uh, a lot of the times you need to finish off the fight uh, too. So when it's 3v3, you need to finish off the fight. Either go back together or go forward together. So you're still like plan you're still in mid fight. Uh, here you guys are still in mid fight. And you guys should be talking, like these guys should be talking. Like I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Oh, their mercy's dead. Can we push? Something like that. Okay, I'm going to use coal. Like stuff like that. Here again, you guys are going backwards. Again, should be setting up a dive. My DPS are shooting monkey and stuff. I don't want to shoot monkey. I want to be talking about these guys. They get to go first, which is not good. Uh, because I think our monkey jumped. Jump. Oh, he uses bubble here. There's nothing to shield off. I, I, I don't want to poke, so there's no point in shielding. If I'm going in, I'm using my shield to protect myself from onanade and from sleeps and general protection. They jump us first, and this is bad. Once, once you're the first one jump, they get to go first. This guy's going to primal your guy's face. It's going to be pretty annoying. And you guys are also just not doing anything to their backline. That's free walking in. Again, if their backline's over here, maybe you can focus the monkey. Just hack the monkey, kill him. But from what I'm seeing at uh, your guys' level, like the Ana just walks in with the monkey, and then you guys, both backlines should just die. Desync, desync, desync. You guys dive finally, but... Your, our support's already dead because they went first. Okay. So, for setup, is it clear? Like, I think this part of the map is really, really interesting to talk about. You can dive here. And when I say dive here, this is where their back line is, right? We can dive when, when they get through the tunnel, right here. We can dive before they go through the tunnel. And that's fine, too. If we, 
if we are diving here, what what is our setup look like, looking like? Who is where? Like, where do uh, where's our like flank angle? Where's our main angle? Yeah, that makes sense. We played against Wait, a you're... team that was like really good. That like they would dive us. We were playing on Nibani. They would dive us at, like every single point of the map, and it was like we could not do anything about it. Yeah. Sorry. So you. Whatever you're saying that, do you mean that uh, like we're diving onto them while they're there, or we're diving from there onto them? Uh, I always talk about things that where where they're at. Uh, I don't okay because so, we yeah. we if choose the... our position. We choose our position. So right. this is this is a classic spot to kill backline. This is a classic spot. They come out of the tunnel and then yeah. What? How do we want to set yeah. up for this? Yeah. In that case, if they're just coming out of tunnel, we're just gonna look to be pretty much. Uh, just looking, looking uh, from directly across on the uh, other, uh, sorry, on the opposite end of the tunnel. Looking from there to see when we when they come in, we can be, have somebody on high ground ready for as soon as they walk out um, to drop onto them, and probably from the doorway maybe get somebody coming out. Not sure, maybe uh, the doorway in the back, not the uh, so not across the from tunnel. Sure. Yeah, yeah, or the mega, correct? Sure. And who needs to be where? I a... would say in that backline area by the Mega, a Reaper okay. should probably be there because he's got really close range and he's uh, has the ability to get out. I would say Sombra maybe is trailing behind them from the tunnel, waiting for them to push. I would say that probably Diva is playing this high ground, maybe with the uh, with one of the supports with her, maybe even monkeys with her, and then this corner in front of them. I would say maybe no one plays. Maybe the team like is in this high ground area. Maybe even Lucio is with the Reaper in the back, like getting ready to speed in with like Monkey and the three of them are back there by the Mega. Yeah. Okay. One thing is like, okay, uh, that was a lot of angles. Like the, it's kind of a trick question. You guys can set up anywhere with anyone. Uh, and another thing is you guys don't need to be every, if, uh, what's the most important thing is that you guys all land on the same space together. Like you guys all group up together. I want my Mora on top of my monkey, like as much as possible. But you do actually don't need to go super wide because you do want to stay together because you want to heal a bit. I would say like if I had to make a rule, it's like four people together. But it, it there's no rule. There's no rule. The more together you are, the more easy it is to heal out poke damage because they should be if they're smart at all. They just like look at your reaper. They just look at uh. The people behind so you don't want to spread too thin in this comp like your supports generally want to be together uh and your tanks generally want to be together so that they can protect each other but it's not a hard rule as long as you guys land in the same space so you kind of gave like too many angles or like too many too much split we don't need to split that much and the most important thing is we can give space to this hide and then explode out especially at your guys elo like they'll be like what the fuck i can just walk through here and then you ex like Speed from this corner, your monkey jumps, your reaper's already on top of them, and then the sombra's already hacked the uh, hacked the mercy from behind, right? So, yep. like, and the order of this matters too. Uh, sombra, you might want to come out second, uh, <laughs> meaning like let your monkey jump first, and then you can come out for the hack. That way, because if you're <laughs> the first one that pops out, they you have to TP away, and you want to be in the fight. You want to be a damage dealer. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is it important for us to like be careful of how many abilities we're using to get into the fight too? Uh yes, and that would be like too far. For example, like if I want to dive here and I'm hiding around this corner and I use half my speed boost just to go here, that's not very good. Yeah. It like, you know, what's perfect is if I can use half speed and then use the rest for amp or you know, like the best dive is when I don't have to use speed and then I can use mid fight amp for myself for speeding to chase down their Ana or uh, just amp healing. You know, like, the closer... Yeah. The, it's just up to you guys and them for, like, the dive location, basically, and how hard they poke you out. Because, like, maybe our Sombra gets kicked out, and then she's, like, over here, and then she has to die from this angle, you know? Like, you guys still have to go, right? Like, your yeah. Sombra gets randomly Diva spot checked here, but you, their backline just crossed here. Like, you probably still have to go, Um, is my opinion. So... So would it, would it be better for us to try and take like angle or uh take positioning where we can dive as quick like as quickly as possible using as little abilities as possible yes so you there's this idea of cutting the distance i'm gonna go over that on attack actually that's a great question uh and again if the fight was over here like let's say we wanted to dive here we would want to set up maybe behind them over here over here is good yeah all of this is over here good if we want to dive here we can we can Hide our monkey over here. 
uh, TPR Reaper over here, he's just hiding. No one checks this spot because people don't expect to get spawn camp. Even pros, like the Gladiators, I'm not even joking, have like demoralized teams. We've spawn camped so many teams, it's crazy. Because I, I tell my team to play aggressively as possible. And this part of the map is actually quite good. Like there's a high ground above them and we can, yeah, we can use it all. You guys can die from here. Just hide around this corner. Your Sombra is scouting. Okay, they're on us right here, right where we talked about. Okay, three, two, one. Explode, jump out, kill here. And then in this case, maybe our Reaper is set up over here. I don't even think we need anyone else hiding, to be honest. Just Reaper over here, and then my Sombra invis is fine. And again, yeah. Reaper can just go with the team and then TP in front of their face. It's TPs are less effective if they know where they're at. You know, it's better to be completely yeah. hidden. But yeah, like you guys just need to set up wherever they are. And the backline places should be very intuitive for your monkey. Like wherever your monkey can jump, that is a good dive spot. So it's going to be like just outside of chokes. It's not in chokes, it's going to be just outside. Because when there's roofs above the monkey's head, it's kind of annoying. Like, if we wanted to die backline in yeah. here, it's kind of hard. If he has primal, he can do it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's something to talk about. Uh, but, yeah. I'm just talking about general, yeah, general stuff. Okay. And uh, just from, like, real quick, uh, from a comms perspective, should we be, like, like uh, leaning on our monkey to be calling what the team is diving? Or is that more of, like, our Sombra and watching from their backline... Uh, you're some. Uh, I think it's pretty deceptive. Uh, main tanks are always like, for whatever reason, in Overwatch, main tanks have this like high expectation that they need a shot call. Uh, in this comp, like m you need to carry monkey a lot. Monkey is your carry, but at the same time, he has the least ability to see things because they want to poke out the monkey before he comes. If he gets to hide, oh, I forgot another thing. Winston can hide as well. Uh, it's good. You don't have to use jump pack for here, and then you can jump pack after the mercy, and then juggle, juggle like uh, primal her in the air, right? Like that's ideal. Like if you don't like, sometimes you want to jump pack in as monkey. Other times, you, like if you just drop, it's better, right? Like that's why you yeah. could just start from this high ground, and that'd be good. Uh, so like I actually think Sombra and Reaper should be calling more. Again, if it's Tracer, it's fine too. Tracer Reaper, Tracer Sombra, Echo, Echo Reaper. Choose any of the dive heroes that we talked about in this. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't have the fucking thing. But yeah, in the in the list, like you can play Genji Reaper. I think all are really acceptable in my opinion. Like especially at your level, I I don't actually know if the Sombra play is gonna be good enough. Um, I would honestly suggest Tracer Reaper. But it, as long as someone is calling, like even the Lucio can call, the Moira can call. I think everyone can see equally. The Diva a lot of the times, like space for our team could call dives as well because the diva can like come out and matrix on her own timing sometimes if the monkey peeks out he just takes 300 damage from a headshot you know like randomly shit yeah. happens whereas diva can kind of like spot check peek with a dm so but your monkey is probably the smartest like just in general your main tanks are generally smarter players uh and they can like tell you guys where he wants to die but you guys will have to give him info for dive that's like perfect world but okay. sometimes he will like uh fissure had to like spot check a lot of times he didn't want to but he had to like spot check like himself see with his own eyes where things were at for his own timing. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Cool. We were talking about okay, so we want to use the least amount of abilities to get to them. Yes. Because they're like if they're ten thousand miles away, I cannot dive them. It's the same with Rush. If they're ten thousand miles away, I cannot dive them. So what do we need to do for for cutting the distance? We gotta use LOS. We gotta use LOS. Everyone knows knows what LOS is? Yep. Line of yeah. sight. Okay. Yeah. Wall. Here's a wall. Oh, I can't see anything through this LOS. Yeah. Okay. Du -du 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 -du. Ready. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ready for that. I think somebody had to like yeah, pee yeah. here or something. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. So we talked about we can dive anywhere. We can, but what what is the main problem with high grounds for our comp? Lucio, Moira. Yeah, they have a hard time getting up. Lucio can get up uh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, for sure can get up. Moira cannot. So what do we actually want to do here? We want to dive their backline. Their backline's like here. Their mercy's up here. Their soldier's up here, for sure. Like, we want to dive there. How do we get to there? You guys are main Andes. I, I call you guys main Andes. You guys just fight so linearly. It's just like, go down main, run it down main. That that That's not, you know, the ideal situation. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? So could we, like... Uh try and get our Moira up behind on many to your left right now up the stairs so she can get into onto high ground like where our Sombra is right now and then once like our monkey Reaper and Diva engage on their back line she is just coming out of the hallway mm -hmm. 
or she could get up to the the left side high ground that's open right now and jump across or something that sounds great to me another thing that sounds great to me why don't you guys all just move this way <laughs> this is all fine to move all together because the more you stand like uh if they're doing their jo job right they want to fight for space they want to like be proactive and poking you guys out they don't want you to set up right they should be surrounding mm -hmm. you so the more you split uh, and the longer it takes, the worse it is, right? Because, like, your Moira goes over here. That means uh, if I'm their diva, I'm just shooting this monkey in the face. So you're not yeah. very pro. It, like, assuming the team stands stills, if it's PvE, of course you can do this. If there are bots literally standing still, which, it, to be fair, like, at, at your guys' level, I actually see. But I'm going to assume the team is better. We can all rotate here. And then what we can do, they can't see us in here, right? They're LOS. I can send people this way with speed and send my Moira this Moira and Diva this way or something like that. Or Moira and uh, uh, Sombra that way, right? I don't know. And then we can meet up over here because their backline is going to go this way down or this way over here. Your Sombra can scout it for you, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're going this way, this way. But basically, you, you use the map to cut LOS. They they can't kill you from this crossing, I don't think. You just shift across or speed boost. Like, don't don't speed unless you need to. Uh, but you can speed boost across, wait for your speed boost in here. They can't do anything to you guys inside of there. And then from here, you cut the map this way. And now now it's a shorter distance to their Ana, right? It's a shorter distance rather than from main all the way to here. That's quite a long jump. If he has speed boost, he can yeah. get there. But look at how we cut the distance. And when they rotate, they rotate slower than you guys because you guys have this guy named Lucio. So as long as you guys are quick on their rotation, you guys go this way. The Ana will have to go this way, all the way over here, or this way. If she does something crazy, like go point or under you, you guys can just kill that, obviously. But the smartest places for Ana to go are like back here and hide, or back here. Luckily, you guys have this Sombra character who can see where she goes. So, yeah. And if you don't see the Ana too, just dive something else. It's fine. It's not ideal. You want to find the Ana, but you can just like matrix it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing, when you guys dive, uh, even if, like, I, I doubt you guys will path optimally, like, a lot of the times. But if you guys do dive, uh, dive together. Yeah, dive together. Don't do not do this where you guys are, like, half showing. So you guys, this guy just took, like, 300 damage of poke. We just got naded. All this stuff. And then we're going afterwards. Make this a one motion. This is like if Ryan, you, you speed boost, you wall, and then, but, like, your Ryan isn't moving forward. And then your Ryan goes in after the wall and the speed boost are down. This is the same thing. Just one motion things. It should it should be clean. One motion. Like, use your, all, all your things. From here, if I'm going to, like, again, I don't want to do this, but if you guys had to do this for whatever reason, like, or you just had, like, a fat EMP or, like, a really beat to, like, make it worth it, and you guys needed to go fast, that's fine. Three, two, one, speed boost, jump, D.Va comes up. Maybe, and then after you jump, decide what you're doing. Maybe we're chasing further, or maybe we just back up and regroup. That's fine, too. But it should never look like this. This, this looks horrendous. Monkey's already no armor. These guys are all purple. You have no matrix. You have 200 HP. You have to get a mega. And then this guy's up. This guy's up. And then the Reaper's not up. This, this looks... This looks awful. Yeah. It, it hurts my eyes, you know? <laughs> it should hurt your guys' yeah. eyes, too. <laughs> yeah. I want you guys to see that and, like, be like, wow, we, we really can, can do a lot better. Mm -hmm. so, so the correct play there would have been to, like, just wait two seconds, heal up, and then go? Or just to um, uh, the correct go, go down way. a bit? The correct play is to go this way. Well, yeah, I mean, if it, in that oh. case, like in the... Uh... Oh, the correct play? Oh, from like here? Oh, uh, if you guys want yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you oh, you, got, you guys didn't know about this one, and you're just saying you wanted to die from here, what's the best way you could do it? Uh, correct. You'd probably set up your Reaper at an off angle. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe coast. Uh, your Sombra's calling for the dive. You guys, 3, 2, 1 from this corner. You DM here so that you don't get purpled. You DM here, speed boost, jump out, kill them. Your Lucio Moira probably repositioned to here, and then I don't think you guys kill this Ana most likely. So, but if you do, that's fine. You guys probably have to drop down to the wall and then regroup into this tiny room or into the their side. You guys have to like switch sides probably. Because yeah, after after you jump here, you're out in the open, which is not good. So you have to find a way to find cover, which is this way or in some cases this way. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go into other fights.
Uh, even from this high ground, I think Moira can shift over us. If you guys are really desperate, again, this one is by far the best one on Noombani. Uh, but yeah. Okay, we can't be using bubble. Uh, if we're looking to dive, we can't be using bubble. If we're looking to kick out tanks, we can. So if we're looking to kick out tanks, my Sombra set up for a hack. My Sombra decides if we're pressuring the tanks out or if we're looking for dive. Sometimes you can't always look for dive. Maybe the Ana's like just AFK over here. Or like you don't know where the Ana is sometimes. It's fine. But that means we're looking to hack a tank and you guys can just run at the tank instead. Uh, yeah. So yeah, again, I always want to go for backline if possible. But there's sometimes where you can't. And in this case, like, if I'm going to fight tanks, I, I, I want to hack with it. You guys are fighting 5v4, 5v6. This game is a 5v6 right now. Here, and then we should just run up this diva. Uh, but yeah, you guys don't want to sit in a choke right in front of them. Because they have, they have the spam comp, right? They have the poke comp. And you guys are fighting long range against them and shooting their, their non-poke heroes. You guys could have easily, just to be clear, you guys could have easily killed the tank here. If you guys just set up this hack right here. Sorry. If you guys set up a hack right here. And then, like, imagine your tanks have full DM and full, uh, actually have a monkey shield at the same time. Like, he just jumps their tanks, he jumps their D.Va. Their D.Va's going to be like, what the fuck, this monkey's feeding. Doesn't look behind him. And then you guys pr pretty much can kill this D.Va for sure. But you guys are down 200 HP each. The bubble's already gone, full DM is gone, and yeah, the pressure's building up. You could imagine the yeah, these guys would live and then hopefully my Reaper is pushing out uh, and killing the Diva too. So yeah, that's an example of you guys don't always have to go for tank uh you guys don't always have to go for supports, but again, if you can go for supports, if not possible, like talk about it. Uh and set up for tanks. Set up for the middle. We call that killing the middle people. Uh which is fine to do as well. Um, okay. Is it an acceptable strategy for us to, like, allow them, like, allow their tanks to initiate the attack and, like, jump on us, and then we, like, as soon as they jump on us, we basically reverse it and jump their backline instead? Yeah. And, like, leave the tanks there? Uh, since our supports are somewhat mobile. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's the short answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's acceptable. Uh, More situational. Uh, in what situations? Basically, like, their monkey probably shouldn't be... Like, if they jump on you, they better set up a good dive. Uh, and your supports will get pressured a lot. Like, Lucio is actually very, very killable in this comp. Uh, people think Lucio Mario is hard to kill, but I think it's because uh, up until, like, 4k, people don't have the aim to kill 200 HP targets in, like, one clip or whatever. But if they have an Echo and he's just above... Like, let's say you gave him space here. You just, like, stood out stood out in front here and then waited for their monkey to jump from main. Let's say he jumped from main, he didn't drop, you know, he he literally jumped you. The echo probably mm -hmm. kills the Lucio a lot of the times. So again, you guys want to go first, but um, Yeah. We call so it's it a kind of one of those things that like works a... against Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, I was saying it's like one of those things that like works against like people that wouldn't be as good, but if we're trying to plan to play against better players and it's yeah, not a great idea. Yeah, if if you guys are playing Zen Brig or Ana Brig, then it's better, uh, because your your uh, Ana Brig can just like go back and peel for themselves while your front line kills them. You bait their front line to jump in, and then you can go dive them. Uh, we call that a counter dive. Like, don't care about our backline, only look to dive their backline because their backline wants to push in to help their tanks. Uh, but in Lucio Moira, you don't really have a backline. You guys just run six together. So, uh, it's actually interesting, but. It's an interesting topic, but not for your guys' comp, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really interesting topic, though. It's very deep. <laughs> Objective lost. Okay, I might have to just do one or two more fights and then just go to, like, general questions or things like that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, already, like, you guys are, are not a success as a unit. Uh, if you want to fight... If you guys want to get staggers, I, I'm down to ignore cart. Like I, I care about, I, I care about cart the least out of any coach in Overwatch League. I'm, I'm like certain about that. I like winning fights more than anything. Uh, I want to win fights. So, but if you guys want to get staggers, just commit to getting the stagger. Leave one on cart if you want, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Oh, 
much more do we got? Okay. Okay, how do we set up here? Someone use this fucking side, please. <laughs> Someone use this yeah. side, please. Yeah, you guys are you guys are main Andes, is what I like to call you. Main Andes, just every time go main. <laughs> And also, this allows you to cut in more. Look at where their look at where their Ana sits. It's very predictable where their Ana will sit as well, because uh, they're fighting this corner. Uh, she, if she sits here, she can't heal her monkey. She's almost always here, like here or yeah. here or here. It's like pretty obvious. Like I, I can do this without scouting. You guys can run through here, find their Ana, make them rotate around, and then you can push cart after, or you can just straight up dive her and then push cart after the fight as well. Oh, was this? This wasn't very good, but I, I think they fucked up more. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, at least your Reaper TP, like, you guys tried to do something. Your monkey should have died, but it's fine. Okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here. Actually, I, I think I got through the big ideas I wanted to go through. Uh, main main things that I like just to recap. Think about the differences between your comps. Think about the differences between your comps. Try to construct your comps so that you're not this like half poke, half half rush comp. But no matter what advantage they have, you guys also have an advantage. There's no comp in Overwatch that is best uh, at your guys' level. There's no comp that in Overwatch that is best. Just try to find the win condition for your thing. Okay, that's one. Two, between each fight, make sure you have a plan. I don't care what it is, but between each fight, it should not be silence. Uh, it should always be like thinking about the next fight. And where we fight is really important as well. Okay. I don't care who comes up with it. It can be anyone. And when you guys do come up with a plan, add to the plan. Add to the plan. I want additions to the plan to make it work. It could be the shittiest plan in the world. Uh, and I don't I don't care. Shitty plans work all the time if you guys are all together and make it make additions to like make it better, right? I'd rather have a shitty plan that's really detailed than a good plan that's that no one knows what what's going on. Yeah. And yeah. then the third thing for Rush, like there was a lot of things. Look for their backline, look for setup on their backline uh like set up flanks whatever and then also don't play play you guys can play linearly but like use pathing use pathing with this comp to cut distance cut distance think of this game as like yeah it's a cut distance type of game look at this game from third person and there's many paths to to where you need to go cut the yeah. distance okay cool um are there any questions? Sorry, I, I know I didn't go through all the VODs. Uh, I was just trying to like get down some key points because uh, fundamentally, I think you guys are a bit like you guys need to work more on on fundamentals essentially more than any mm -hmm. particular map. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and ask a question real quick. But uh, mm -hmm. so when we're playing like a like a Ryan Diva rush, um, like let's say we were playing better rush than our like half poke half rush that we were doing uh -huh. but like when we're playing like the good rush are we rushing in on them like if they're mirroring the rush are we rushing in on their like back line trying to kill supports first mm, okay yeah good question uh it's more like if you can hit the supports go for the supports like um i'll try to find an example welcome to reality uh, like, you have to care for the Shatter versus Shatter battle, and, like, that that is something I'm aware of. But I used to call this thing called, like, clumps or whatever. Like, in this case... Oh, this isn't a good example. Ready for battle. You guys play OT, right? Ready for battle. Okay. Maybe this is it? I, I actually don't remember. I'm gonna make up hy a hypothetical if, it, if it's something doesn't work. Ryan swinging on Ryan's don't actually do anything. It just like feeds all charge and it's important to like maximize your Ryan thing. But if I'm here, like really I want to run past the Ryan into like as hit as many my my hammer's a cleave. I want to hit as many people as possible. Think about Winston too. Like Winston wants to hit as many people as possible. He doesn't actually want to zap the other Winston. He wants to cleave as many people as possible. So like, I want to push past here, and when this Ryan holds this corner, if there's a Ryan here, and then backline here, I am pushing past the Ryan. There's no reason. I don't care if a Ryan swings me in the back. It doesn't matter to me as a Ryan. Like, my Ryan cares more about killing, like, cleaving, getting the maximum cleave value as possible. Let's see if this actually happens here. Okay, so he 
just posturing, posturing. Oh, they just fucking window, I forgot. Uh, but, like, let's say they did, like, you know, they didn't have uh, Symmetra and they had, like, May Cree or something, and then they went out this way. What you want to do is run past the Rhine into their back line. You just want to get as much damage in as possible. Like, I'm making yeah. it too complicated. You're, you just want to get as much damage in as possible on the best possible targets. So, like, I'm not saying you always have to go for it. Uh, but yeah, if you guys try to go for backline a little more, like see more opportunities for it, go for it. But if the bap's like sitting all the way back here, you don't need to. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Diva inting on bap is like very meta. Like it, it is like something every every bap I know in Owl is like fuck their Diva. Like oh my god, this Diva all he does is int on me. Shu complains all the time about <laughs> like oh my god, Punk is so good. This guy just runs at me every single time. Uh, so like in like the middle of a rush, like the Art Diva would just run on their Baptiste, preventing him from helping the team and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, but as long as you guys pressure at the same time, you guys don't need like target focus and or you guys kind of need target focus, but it's not like the biggest deal in this comp. Like if the Diva is controlling the Bap, he he can't heal right, and then it should make everything easier for the front guys. It's yeah. like if Winston jumps Ana, and then you guys kill the rest of them, right? Like. You block off the Ana heal, the Mercy has to like heal the Ana instead, and then their front line has no healing, that's fine too. So it's more about the timing of the rush and the quality of the rush. It doesn't like there's so many separate situations like uh that I can't say, you know, like maybe you get walled off in these situations, blah blah blah. Like it's this part of the map, it's this part of the map, that doesn't really matter. As long as you're pressuring things at the same time, such that you're fighting a six, that's the important part. Just like with the dragon, you know how you use the dragon to fight here? You guys are fighting to me the dragon is one v six. I don't like that. You guys just need to fight together with the dragon and then it's a six v six, you know? So just yeah. fight with all the pressure. Like it just this is just a general thing. If you're gonna fight, fight fight with everything. Fight with everything. There's no half half ass fighting. Same with a rush, you don't like send your Reaper in later, you send your Reaper in at the same time. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I have a question. Hi. As a coach, what can I be doing for my team to help them more when we're reviewing? Uh I think player discussion is really, really important. I have like led this review and obviously you guys like pay pay me to to lead this review. Uh I think getting more out of the players is is really, really important for you as a coach. Um like, I used to review, like, basically two hours a day. We have, like, four hours of scrim, so we review one hour before the day. Uh, we scrim two hours. We have a break. We scrim two hours. And then I used to review, like, any post-scrim stuff for, like, an hour. Uh, and I think that's a pretty... My opinion is that that's a light schedule for, like, NA Valorant players. That's, like, a very crazy schedule. For Overwatch League, it's probably on the, like, medium side, I would say. Because there's a bunch of Korean teams who, like, know how to get the most out of it but review time is more quality if your players are engaged and what i like what we did uh i stole this from moon actually uh ty told me about what moon does and then we just incorporated it onto our team uh moon is the head coach of shanghai dragons but he's like more of like a i don't i don't actually know his role but uh he's a smart guy who knows how to make like a team environment knows how to make a a family environment and what he did is like hey guys we have the answers as coaches uh but i want you guys to talk to each other and bot review with each other just like go over like what you guys want to go over for the scrim i don't know how like loosely he did it maybe he made them look over certain maps or whatever but like i just direct that and like kind of help the discussion i add as little as possible if, if they're like david we're stuck i literally you know i'm like okay okay uh, i'll go in but even like the coaches are like maybe this you know we're like suggesting things because like we haven't had proper time to review after the scrim. We just, we're we literally just, you know, talking very casually and trying to figure things out together. You know, we're like, what do you guys think about this? Only when I'm certain am I like, okay, guys, guys, simple, simple, simple. Like, but I want them to arrive at the their conclusions themselves. I want them to come up with plans because I cannot play the game for my players. I know this game up and down, but if I were to coach you guys, I I, I cannot play the game for you. Like, there's, there's no way I can play the game for you. You guys have to see the game. I can plan first fights for you. I can plan, give you guys these general principles, but you guys have to be in the moment in the game playing yourselves and that's where you guys need to work together as the six in the game there's no replacement for that and that's i emphasized that to the team i made sure you know i gave leadership roles i gave space leadership roles tried to grow them as a leader i knew that like this is my win condition for my team is i don't want them to be a very structured team i want them to be a player like as much as possible player driven even though we were a very coach driven team like i have like two hours of review set up like i have i can go over a two-hour vod very easily um, and point out every like all the mistakes, but um, getting player engagement is by far the most like effective way to get your team to like be more match effective, essentially. Okay, yeah, 
because I, I find that um maybe it's just like a, a preconceived role of like the coach goes through and like it looks through the vods and then tells the team like what they did wrong and stuff but that's a i think that's a much i i like that a lot it's a very good way of trying to get the players to engage and do all that i did um, half and half and it, it was very hard for me i'm a very controlling person like yeah uh i i i know i know best and like you know i have that ego for it because like you know that's how i got mm -hmm. good you know like is because i tested out my theories like was very confident about my theories but uh it's really just like what is best for the team uh and also i i still need a review with my team i have the hour before scrims to go over like the most important concepts maybe i have more for review my players are always like joking he's like one more clip isn't it david yeah like and it's like yeah <laughs> i have one more clip to go over always you know um so, okay, so yeah, you would yeah. say uh, maybe it's a good idea then of like before a scrim have like things you want to work like on. A, like yeah like a short like review thing of like okay guys here's from like the previous things mm -hmm. uh, there's a few things I need to tell you of like what you can improve on and like here's the things we need to work on. Yep, yep. So it'd be oh, yeah, so it'd be a good idea to have scrims like have review before scrims. Yeah, review before scrims is always best. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Knowing what you're gonna do before the day is like that's important for learning for any anything. You you learn better uh, if you have like a conscious goal yeah. before. And I imagine that also applies to have review before games. Uh, before games, I make it lighter. You kind of want your okay. guys to be ready for game day, uh, in my opinion. Right. And oftentimes, I don't have scouting on my enemy team. Even an owl, I, like. It, it's kind of hard to get scouting because they played like such different maps and stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you there's... don't bother with scouting at all. It's oh. just like let's, let's go in, play what we play. I scout, but it's it's very hard to make it transferable just because like the maps were different, and a lot of times in all the meta like changes a lot, like the week to week meta changes a lot. Yeah. And yeah, I, I scout for sure. It's just like literally teams change all the time. Uh, yeah. I have the ideas in my head, but I'll give them like the specifics if it's like a two CP strat or something like, or if I think that they're gonna run it. But a lot of times, I I've been very like very clear on like what what has been good, and teams have never said I've underprepared. I guess. Mm -hmm. I want to show you guys one more thing for being match effective. Actually, uh, I'm showing my screen, but I think I need to show the window for you guys to hear it. Is that correct? Change. Windows. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In matches, don't ever talk. Don't ever do this. Don't ever talk about the last fight unless it's constructive towards the next fight. In yep, scrims, don't ever about. do this as well. Talk about it between rounds. Pause if you need to. I'm fine with conflict. I'm a big fan of conflict personally. I think conflict is good. Conflict just means that you guys disagree and that you guys have different views and you guys need to come together to find a, a good thing. I don't think I need to show this, but I will. But, like, you guys are talking about the last fight, and I'm not sure what rule you're talking about. I, I'm not on your guys' team. But, like, talk about things productively for the next fight. Like, just say, like, okay, like, I like next time, play, play like, le let's do this when they bomb. That's all I need to know, you know? Like, I, I don't really care what it is. Like, it's not like you should have been here. One, that comes off as an attack. Two, it's not important what happened in the last fight. Just always frame things as the next fight. And that will keep you guys focused, because you guys didn't really plan the next fight. And it was pretty bad. Yes. Um, I can show the comms if you guys don't remember. But yeah. that, That's something I talk about a lot with the teams is that we spend too much time not focusing on the next fight. And I always tell them, the second the fight ends, ignore that last fight. Think about what the next fight is. Yeah. And always be planning. Never be silent. It's only, it's yeah. Only are you stalling? Yeah, we're talking about, like, where are you stalling? Where are you doing oh. this? I oh, we still can't hear it. I think you have to share, like, Google Chrome. Like, the actual... I thought I did. Um... Uh no, I still see a watch under it. You cannot oh, stream just oh. yeah. I think you can, I, I think you have to stop this stream and then like restream. Is it good? You now? shouldn't have to stop it. Uh, play. Yeah, play. play. Okay. I can get on. I can get on. I'm yeah, we hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. Right. I'm. Yeah, come on. Stop, 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 stop. It's only. It's only Arya. Oh. Vo, were you stalling? We're leaving. Yeah, I was throwing, and also, you all moving too fast for me. We, just, we, right. just had to, we had to wait for the window there's, there's to go down before we went. Well, uh, I, I was just asking if you were throwing because you were on point. And... I was trying to move back to y'all, but I literally couldn't. Okay. I was with the uh, argument. Just try to stay back because we rotated up. No, you were doing fine. You didn't have to be on top of us then. Because you were, you were actually healing us, and, and whenever we dropped uh, can we speed high noon? Speed high noon? Well, yeah, we literally, <laughs> like, the yeah, only yeah. thing is, like, someone's refocuses us to just say, say a plan to go, but, like, this this like hurts your guys mental this guy's it just like isn't a like conducive uh team environment for productivity basically so it's an yes. obvious thing but 
just like I, I i hate when i see this happen to any team you know like you guys can do better like just talk about it after it's i'm i'm perfectly fine with conflict by the way like i don't care about tone or whatever like i want to get to the bottom of it whatever it is like i am not afraid to have conflict as a coach i don't think you guys should be afraid to have conflict i don't think you guys should try to be ha like have like harsh conflict or anything you guys don't need to be angry at each other but conflict is just anytime you guys disagree try to do it in the most productive way possible and try to do it at the right time uh that's that's a really important thing from my side after scrims is always a good time to talk okay yeah. or between maps like i uh, sometimes the conflict is like uh, i know sometimes like things like hurt it hurts like you you feel this like welling in your chest and you're like fuck man like i, I really want to get out my opinion pause the game like pause the game between the maps and be like okay let's talk about it i, I would rather lose like half a map of overwatch than be like mentally not there for the next map you know yeah, yeah. exactly and I, that's something we definitely need to start doing because we we have a big problem of talking a lot about how we died or like what went wrong. And yeah, just focusing on the next map can help. On the next uh, fight helps a lot. As a coach, I literally just yell "next fight" when when I hear bickering. Uh, I just I just yeah. like I'm like next 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 next. So I'll check I'll check I'll check like something like yeah. that. In, yeah, in scrims we've had it where we're like coaches and stuff can't talk, but I feel like that doesn't help a lot. I feel like if it's people are getting off track then i think it's really helpful for the coach to just be like okay that's next next you guys are just wasting too much time yeah also we just like refocus random thing uh make your videos private after because maybe it was on stream or something <laughs> the url uh mm -hmm. okay. but yeah we have stuff. our stuff i think normally set to it's private. unlisted but if you it's have unlisted. URLs... yeah yeah just change it to private because uh, you guys gave it to me unlisted which i appreciate thank you <laughs> yeah of course okay um any other questions um, I've been trying to think of a way to ask this question mm -hmm. and like make it make sense, but you've talked about playing linearly. Mm -hmm. uh, as someone who has like a thousand something hours of ranked, it becomes very easy to play linearly. So when yeah. you say playing not linearly, it's like taking positions that they wouldn't expect you to that just fundamentally give you an advantage over your enemy. Yes. It's really hard to incorporate that mid game. But I think of like when our main tank's going in through main, he's playing linearly, he's walking straight up to them. He complains a lot. My shield's breaking. I can't. I'm so low. I'm taking so much damage. Yeah. Incorporating like nonlinear play helps him, you know, they have to deal with the flankers, they have to deal with this high ground, gives our tank a lot more space and makes it so much easier for him to move forward. Mm -hmm. So when incorporating this nonlinear play make the tanks feel like they have less of a load to carry when they're trying to push through objectives and take space yes yes exactly right uh the the reason why it, it, it feels bad for him is because if you guys are all stacked up at six in the same angle and he's the front guy the front guy is going to be complaining <laughs> like you know yeah. they're only looking yeah. at the front guy you know they're they're six man just looking at the front guy i'm guessing this guy's shield gets broken so fucking hard and he's just like oh my god my shield dead i cannot walk yeah like i've heard all that same shit if you're like you know slightly over here you know that means the symmetra has to go mark you or something like that through the connector they, they've got to do something else and then it's not six people looking at ryan the same problem will happen on winston as well like winston's complaining like i'm just getting shot at and it, it's the same it's the same thing so you're, you're exactly right uh for your incorporation of rank I, I really think that uh at least i even look at you know like pub pub games at higher SRR, like they understand the ideas fundamentally they might not incorporate them perfectly or as a team but like the hit scan players for sure understand it uh some some of the higher level players understand like the supports understand oh i need to go watch for that angle too the the map awareness just generally increases as you go higher um so these are good things to practice in ranked and should help your ranked uh experience as well i like came back and i was like terrible at aiming but i played kree just for fun uh, after like a couple years of not playing and i i used all the the strats that i knew from al and just you know whoo my mccree i'm just rolling in flashing over here you know like at uh, in a four thousand game and four thousand people are like oh my god like th this is so it's so yeah, brain dead yeah. that you're dying this way and it's like no 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 no, no i killed bap like it's fine <laughs> you know like yeah it's good yeah. to practice in ranked as well all right uh, thank you i have one more question about like when we're playing Ryan rush so like mm -hmm. should we Let's say we're playing like the Sim Sim May. Should we be moving as six in that scenario, or should we still be taking like these uh these angles on them uh, in the fights? You you just go a little bit wide, but uh I I don't have a good example. Uh, let's see, maybe you just go a little wide off the shield. You like you obviously run in like this as the Rhine, but maybe your Sim just takes a slight off. This is just like basic stuff. Your May takes a slight off angle because if the Rhine, yeah. their Rhine is like here and then he has to look at a May on his right side rather than in front of him, he can't shield it, right? So 
this is just I don't know really how to describe it. This is just like good play. Uh, is it like staying close enough to where like if you're Ryan is calling in like to run in on a target, you're close enough to be able to run in with him. But yeah. Also able to take an angle. You take small angles. It, it's literally like yeah. just get the highest individual value you can in the rush. Like that. That's probably the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. If okay. I want to, if I want to freeze the Rhine, I am not running at him straight forward. I'm going inside his shield a lot of times. If I want to, yeah. like, I see an angle on this this Hanzo right here. Uh, I'm not worried about where my Rhine is. Like my sim should be beaming this guy. If my Rhine is late, my Rhine is late, and that's his fault. Uh, like I'm killing this Hanzo. It, the the symmetric. It's not. Yeah. I think uh these team kit concepts. Like a lot of the time, the answer is like play the game like normally, uh, like find your own value in the game. Which is why ranked is so important, and why individual skill is so important in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I actually have a question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, inting onto the map is like a is a very strong strat. Yeah. Is, is there any situation where it'd be more beneficial for me to like stay with my main tank, as opposed to just straight up going onto that map as soon as the, we get start engaging on them? Uh, if they have window and you're out in the open potentially, but you guys can have a may wall, may wall for that uh, as well. Uh, you pr you can like basically the Cree uh, in this comp, if it was like May Cree versus May Cree, the Cree sometimes goes wide. Um, let me just find. Uh, I'll just find a map. I I don't think they did it, but. Now entering King's Ready. Um, like you know here, like how the team comes out this way. This is pretty bad. Like the Ryan, if it's Ryan versus Ryan, the the Ryan team comes out this. I'll draw. Fuck. The Ryan, the Ryan team comes out this way. They should leave like something on this angle because if they six man go this way, uh, you guys should just run into them and kill their backline a lot of the time. So. A lot of teams like leave a McCree on this side, or McCree even flanks through hotel. Like this is like kind of classic. Like your Ryan goes this way, and then like something's over here. So Diva, you can like you can go after this McCree too. You just go after them if they're they're weak. But like you can also matrix your Ryan. Like if we have like uh like yeah you because you want to matrix him from the flash. If the McCree was standing on top of him, you would just matrix your Ryan through, and then after your matrix, uh you would go int on the map. Like because you'd be standing on statue right, or like you're probably standing on here. It, uh, if it's Ryan right. versus Ryan, your Ryan is looking to meet either of these sides, and then their Ryan is looking to go one of these two ways. If they go this way, wall, run, uh, and then, yeah. And their BAP should try to jump up. If, if they get walled off, their BAP should try to jump up. You should probably try to kill that thing uh, or pressure him so that he doesn't get a good good heals off on the Ryan who's walled, too. There's, like, a lot of details in it, but... You int on the bat like mid fight, I guess. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as, as you see it, as you see it, it's like as soon as he becomes it. like available. Yeah, yeah. A lot of this is like as you see it. It's not really a like the the fight starts and like my diva is running at the bat. It's like mid fight. Sometimes my my diva is literally running at the bat, but uh, yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, guys? Um, I have something that I want to ask for our support players. What would you say, uh, just give us basic situations, even on just like King's Row, what is good positioning for like a bat player on this in first, rush. like in rush? Where is a good position for the bat player rush in like rush. this setting? Yeah, rush versus rush. Where should the bat player be playing? Example of like this first point. Uh, he wants to not be in range of, remember how I said I want Ryan to be like cleaving here? He just wants to play for his highest individual value, more or less. He just wants to shoot things. Bap is like, Bap is basically a DPS uh, a lot of the times, uh, and he he even has exo boots to like position himself better, like his uh, crouch. Uh, so you just position for whatever is like best for you. Uh, what what can you see the most, or if you need to hide from like you know that uh, Kree is like looking at this side, right? Like you might need to move in more, or you just take the duel and ask for your diva to help on this side. Your Bap is like probably one of your strongest heroes so you you play around your bap uh your your bap position depends on how good your bap is basically individually like he just plays for his highest value oh yeah thank you yeah uh yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's it like uh, i see all the hitscan players and i i i'm not sure you like uh yeah i think just playing ranked more would or like thinking about angles more will, will help a lot because i see like the flex support and then you guys were playing double hit scan. Oh, I don't know. I'm pointing to this. Uh, but you guys were playing double hit scan and uh, flex supports. Like you guys were all like brain dead the same angle and just like didn't really understand intuitively when to go wide unless you were like playing soldier. But like don't play soldier. Uh, you guys should always yeah. just be like uh, trying to 
trying to be like get your highest individual value it's like it's like the easiest role in overwatch but the hardest role it's like it's the role everyone wants to play but like it's it's pretty hard to do like getting the timing and everything but like knowing how wide you can go is like what you do in ranked consistently i think if it was just mm -hmm. about aim like this game would be non-interesting but uh yeah. it's it's a lot about taking angles timing stuff like that um one last thing before you go what characters would you say would be good to just avoid like 95% of the time playing. Hog Soldier Bastion. Like what characters should you not play? Hog Soldier Bastion. Okay. Uh, honestly, at your guys' level, I could imagine Hog and Soldier are kind of broken. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I wrote them in the useless tiers and I could see them they're being broken. The reason that they're broken is because they just find their own value. But really, uh, like fundamentally in Team Overwatch, they're, they're awful. Uh, and Bastion should never be good, but I'm sure like mm -hmm. pirate ship stuff like works... Uh, sometimes so i i don't know that that's my perspective as a coach but uh yeah it's yeah. it's also fine if, if you guys are just like hog is working for us soldier is working for us do it i'm just saying like fundamentally i don't believe in it but it doesn't mean it's wrong because you guys are playing at a different level than uh like what what i know you know so it's yes. it's fine yeah yeah like hog looks broken in, in your guys scrims for sure hog is broken in rank yes like. <laughs> hog is for some reason running rampant right now on a lot of comp yeah Okay, I will. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank cool. you so much.